Hey, what's going on? Hey, this is the admin from Flex God. So uh, we're doing a video on uh, news groups. So I did have an older version of this video. It was kind of a little bit long and, um, you know, it's kind of an introduction to things. So I'm um, just creating a second video to, to clear some things up and, and some of the things that I've learned. So the biggest thing that Plex God uses is it's going to use news groups. Now we do have the ability to use torrents. Now, most people, originally I tried news groups and it was slow back then and it was, it was a complete pain to use news groups um went to torrents route and you know uh, realized that's a long and painful process and and now you got to get private torrents and you got to get a vpn and it's just a lot of work involved and, and torrents tend to have some uh, not so friendly files in it and i've come to to, to uh, back to news groups due to the automation of certain programs so the reason you're asking is well wh what why do i want to use news groups um, what the news groups will allow you to do is it will allow you to download your media files at maximum speeds pretty fast compared to torrents and it's it's one-to-one -one, meaning you're downloading from a server you're not having to share back out and you download over a secure port like 443 or 563 so um, let's launch a program just to kind of we're not gonna actually like demo the use of it but just kind of show you how it looks like when you when you're uh, bringing something up so we're gonna go ahead and type in Plex Guide, and we're gonna bring up a program, uh, one of my favorites, NZB Git. So we're gonna do program installer, and we're gonna do NZB Git. So you have NZB Git and Zab NZBD, um, and there's a reason why I'm showing you these programs. For some of you who have not used them and have only used uTorrent, this will be something completely new to you and maybe somewhat confusing. It, it took me like a month to wrap my head around it. So here is our access information. Yeah, I'm pretty much running this in a VM, so <laughs> keeps things simple. Okay, so this program right here is NZB Git, and we'll we'll talk about NZB Git, and let's also bring up Sonar. So hopefully, some of you are familiar with Sonar, or Radar, or Lidar. If you're not used to if you're not used to it, think of them as manager programs that help keep track of all your TV shows and your movies and everything else, so you don't have to manually do it all yourself. And so we should be getting this. And you see with Plex Guide, you see how fast this stuff installs. Hopefully, for the best. Okay. So. This is a diagram that I used in my last video, which was actually pretty helpful. Kind of, kind of gave you an idea of what we were looking at. So right now, you basically will have Plex Guide installed, and in this demonstration that I have here, uh, it's a little bit confusing, but I tried to make it as simple as I could. Um, my goal is to kind of talk through this. So the thing is, unlike torrents, there's two s things that you have to understand. With torrents, you basically just had uTorrent and you would just click a link and stuff started downloading. With um, NZB programs, you need a thing called an indexer. So it's kind of really the first, the first route you wanna go. So some of you, if you look at Sonar, Sonar does actually provide a pretty good list of indexers that you can already start looking at. So this is the torrent stuff that you, know, you can deal with. And, and again, you're paying for some of this stuff. So I tell people just go to NZB route. Um, but here's a pretty much good list of indexers that you can utilize. Ones that I found that have been pretty reliable have been nzbfinder.ws. It's a little bit more expensive, but it tends to find abnormal things. NZBGit has a um, lifetime subscription, and they've been honoring it for, <laughs> for quite a while on my end. NZB Planet also offers a lifetime, and I purchased it three years ago, and they still honor it perfectly. Um, o OMG is actually pretty good. Um, I haven't used Oz, PFMonkey, I've heard talk chatter of people using it. Uh, NZB Cat is a good cheaper alternative. Dog NZB was really the ones people always tend to chase. I don't know about its reliability now, but they went from a, a, a lifetime model to a now monthly model, which is under uh, yearly model, which is understandable, but just the way they kind of went about it kind of put a sour taste in some people's mouths. Um, Drunken Slug is a pretty good cheap alternative, NZB, Zoo. So the thing is with these indexers, you can put as many indexers as you want. So first, what is an indexer? Think of indexer as like the Googles of your files that you're trying to download, right? 
So with RU Torrent, you don't need um, with torrents you don't need an indexer. You just kind of go to a website, you click the link, and you're good to go. The reason uh, the indexer and the files are separate is because they're basically blind to each other. So when you uh, let's say you find your favorite TV show, right? And somebody decides to upload it. So what happens is, is there, um, I call it a treasure map. Um, they create a treasure map with crazy names like AB9, G, ZB, whatever, you know, and it splits it up into like, let's say 100 pieces, right? Well, what happens is those names, uh, all those names get put into that treasure map and it gets submitted to the indexer. The indexer themselves do not have the files. They just track, um, they just kind of keep track of what files are where. Um, it sounds pretty simple, but it's actually pretty complicated. Indexers, uh, the reason they have to charge a little bit of money, it's not, they're not typically expensive. You can get them for like, you know, uh, five to 10 bucks a year. Um, the reason is, is because what happens is when your server, let's say you, for some reason, go crazy and decide to, you know, have a thousand TV shows. Well, your indexer, like, uh, like Sonar here, will peg each indexer that you have <laughs> all day. And so with these indexers, you have a certain amount of API calls. So for example, let's say you have 10 shows that need to be downloaded. Well, it will reach out and if it, you know, discovers it, let's say it pings NZB Geek. Well, you'll at least get a minimal call of 10 API calls. So if NZB Geek said, hey, your membership only includes 10 API calls a day, right? You have a thousand TV shows. Well, within the first 10 episodes, NZB Geek will already be maxed out. So you, you'll notice that some of them maybe offer like lower free amounts. So let's see, uh, let's see, let's go to just NZB Geek and see what it looks like here. NZB Geek. And uh, again, these guys are a pretty good way to start. Uh, a lot of them are now um, invite based, but there's a few that don't. Uh, NZB Geek is one of them. So. Um, you notice here that they just pretty have a, a pretty simple login. Some of them kind of give you a, a, a harder login to kind of... So look at the NZB Geek. You'll end up logging in here. They'll give you an API key. With that API key, you basically plug it into... Um, let's go here. Into into NZB, uh, into NZB Geek. So you pretty much see how they have all the information filled out here. All you have to do is just put in your API key. Your membership will normally tell you how many API calls you have. Um, if you already pretty much have a lot of your content, your 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 uh, your version of Sonar may not tag NZB Geek all day. It just depends on what you're trying to get. You know, if your if your Sonar is trying to upgrade all your shows, well, then that's an API call. Okay, so basically, we have to understand first. Like I said, we we have an indexer. So you have Plex Guide, you have Sonar installed, right? And you're like, okay, where does this fit in the puzzle? So Sonar, Radar, Lidar. Um, it talks to the indexer with via API key that we saw earlier, and then once the API key uh, reach, I mean, once it reaches out via API key, um, they may respond and say, "Hey, we found a treasure map for your favorite TV show, you know, in HD." Because in Sonar, you can actually specify the quality of the files that you want. So you can say, "I want, you know, this quality." You can even set it where you can grab an SD TV copy, and ultimately, you want a Blu-ray copy. Right, but if it's not available, it'll grab the SD copy first, and once it is available, it will download the Blu-ray copy. Actually, overwrite this, delete it, and yeah, it pretty much takes care of everything for you. Okay. Um. So next, so treasure map is found. So, it Sonar gets it, and then what will happen is, is Sonar is not the one downloading the file. Remember, I said Sonar is basically your communications manager. So. Sonar is going to be like, hey, uh, so let's see here. We're not really adding anything here. So let's say you typed uh, some different here, Simpsons, something that, that we know. Okay, so here you can see that we have the Simpsons. So um, if you, you basically have to select the path. You can say what profile you want it to be, uh, what series. So this is going to keep track of everything for you. So we're going to go ahead and add this. We're going to go ahead and add a, a bogus path for right now. Um, Union FS, then I'm going to hit OK. Uh, permissions. Yeah, I'm using a copy of uh, that hasn't been properly configured. Let's just do this. No, it probably might not work. Nope. And trust me, some of you may see that ABC writing error. It's a good you see that. Usually a permissions issue thing. So right now, Union FS is not configured. So I'm just trying to get a simple 
folder. <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's just complete. <laughs> okay, that one's writable. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit the plus thing. And so what it's going to attempt to do is it's going to first download all of the, the media, uh, media, the metadata, all that good stuff for you. So let's check it here. And you can see here that there's many, 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 many seasons of this TV show, right? So it'll tell you the status. It'll tell you, you know, you can do a search. You can do whatever you want. So anyways, Indexer grabs the file. Um, again, this program's keeping track of all your episodes. And then what we'll do is Sonar will then communicate to NZB Git or Zab NZBD, whichever program you have, or some alternate third-party program. There's quite a few out there. But for the purposes of Plex Guide, NZB Git and uh, Zab NZBD. So NZB Git right here is basically the program is going to do all the downloading. Once NZB Git is done communicating or pretty much down, done downloading the file, it will then uh, store it into a complete folder and then it will talk back to Sonar and say, hey, I got the file ready for you. So the key settings that you have to pay attention into NZB Git is basically your new servers and maybe like one or two options about the paths already much pretty much taken care of for you security you can set ports and stuff like that and usernames but the the key here is the the new server so this is the part that confused me for the longest in the very beginning so don't confuse your indexers with the new servers that's where what this is the part where I was talking about there's two parts so the new servers are the ones you're usually going to pay a monthly fee to um, you can pay anywhere from like four something to ten dollars and I've seen people use Giga News and spend 29 a month um, just because you spend a lot of money doesn't mean that it guarantees your downloads and your speeds uh, typically quality speaks for themselves um, two that I recommend um, you know if you check the Plex guide links um, newshosting.com I found to be insanely reliable and uh, Usenet server is pretty good um, the reason I stick with those two is it's not because, you know, I'm actually trying to promote them. It's because I actually use them. Um, news hosting is pretty good with their speed. So if you use the Google GCE edition, uh, you'll see like news hosting, like download like 60 to 100 megabytes by itself, like MB, capital MB. So it can literally saturate a gig line uh, by itself. Um, Usenet server, like I said, if you use both of those in combination, it just tends to just get your files fast. So those are two that I recommend. So if you check your links, um, you know, go ahead and please check, you know, click them and, and sign up. Uh, again, um, you, know, you know, you can sign up for a month to month. So uh, what I used to do was uh, all the ones that I tried to discover, I would do a monthly check uh, and, and see how well it worked out. Okay, so anyways, you're gonna have to set up your server name here. This is not gonna affect anything. Um, you're gonna have to ignore the groups and, and server level. I mean, you can set all that up but you're gonna put the name of your uh, server host. So usually um, it may, for example, news hosting will be news.newshosting.com. The port, you need to change the 443 or 563. Um, do not sign up for a news host that does not allow encryption, unless you just want everybody to see what you're doing. Um, but again, typically you're not gonna be a target, but it's just smart to turn on encryption. Um, if you forget to, to I, I wish NZV Git kind of really thought this through, but, um, you know, to kind of make it auto detect. But if you set 563 here, but you forget to turn this on, you're gonna get a, a connection error. So make sure that you put 563 or 443 and then turn the encryption on. If you're not planning to use encryption, then you can leave it as 119 or whatever they provide you. Okay, Cypher, you can leave alone, connections. Now, something I wish somebody told me early in the day. So if news hosting says, hey, we got 30 connections for you, do not put 30 here, do not put 35 there. Why? Because what happens is your connections rotate when your connections rotate, if they rotate too fast, even though you have 30 connections, their ser most ser news servers will stumble upon themselves and be like, hey, you're using 32. And then it will just kind of, you know, kind of slow you down and agitate you. And yeah. So anyways, what I always tell people to do is put about three less than what you have. So even if someone offers you 15 connections, put 12. Um, because the connections do help with speed. But if the if the news host you're with is pretty good, it doesn't matter how many connections you have. You can have five and max out a gig connection. Um, so make sure this is about three lower. The server retention just leave that at zero. That's auto detected and just leave that and leave that. So the thing is, you can you know save it and then you can add another server. 
if you're typically starting this whole process and you're trying to really catch up your library, it's really good to sign up for like three indexers and two, I wouldn't say three, but you could, three uh, servers. It, it, because what happens is you're gonna max everything out just trying to get everything you can. Once most of your content is complete, you can you know strip down what you have and just go to one or two servers and go to one or two indexers. I, I would always recommend two indexers. Okay, so anyways, uh, Sonar talks to an indexer. Indexer is like, hey, here's my treasure map. NZB Git is like, all right, I'm downloading the file from the new servers. It goes into a download folder. It sits there ready and talks to Sonar via API key. Um, let me show you this right here. So this is a little bit of a trick. So if you're going to talk to your download, let's see, we're going to put download client. We're going to do NZB Git. So you can type NZB Git here. And then you could type uh, NZB git again, because yeah, you might be like, well, don't I gotta put 170? No, you don't. You can actually just put NZB git. It's all Docker containers. Actually, this makes everything simpler too. Definitely if you close your ports and all the other stuff. So test and you see that they talk. So um, it's that easy. With Zab NZBD, you just have to put an API key in. But anyways, long story short, when this program is done, it will then talk to Sonar. Sonar is like, hey, I'm gonna scan that folder. So Sonar scans that downloaded folder and then it imports it over to uh, its, its own, uh, you know, to, to wherever you set the files to go. So if your files go from Mount uh, Union FS, TV, Simpsons or whatever show you have, it will then put it there. So Sonar will has some nice options if you configure correctly. Most of it I tried to automate for you so you don't have to worry about it. Um, let's see, indexer, uh, let's see, Sonar. Yeah. So again, you could you could do a size. Um, you can uh, make sure you turn this on because if you don't, it's a bad day. Uh, and, it, and again, there's quite a, quite a few things you can do. So between both of these programs, um, you can, you know, say, hey, strip this, remove that, block this extension, uh, kind of go from there. Okay, so again, to repeat, so you understand, Sonar, hey, Googles, hey, the Googles are like, hey, the indexers are like, hey, we got the file, treasure map, and to be gets like, all right, I found uh, the files, it downloads all those random files into a folder, Sonar is like, thank you, it puts all those random files together, uh, unzips it, pulls the file out and moves it to your Google Drive. So this or your comp local computer, this is your post processing. Uh, once it's done post processing, like again, the renaming and putting all the stuff together, it then moves it to your storage location that we talked to. And then guess what happens at the end? Plex. Yeah, Plex is just like, hey man, I'm just chilling here. Um, I'm just waiting for this uh, this this uh, TV show to show up. So. That's pretty much it. Um, the thing is, you're gonna have to play with this a little bit, and again, it still be a little bit confusing. But I wish I just found a, a simple one-on-one -on -one video, two programs, and say, hey, what what is it? What are you accomplishing? Because you remember when you do torrent, it's really here to torrent the torrent program, kind of this, and then there. So it, it kind of takes the indexer. You can argue that the indexer would be like the Pirate Bay, um, and it, yeah, there's no there's no there's not this involved. It's just kind of like this. And then it goes to post-processing storage and then this. The great thing is with uh, NZBs, you don't have to seed your files. Um, it's just pretty much download and done. Um, if you use the Google GCE edition and you're starting off your library, you can use the $300 uh, credits from Google to kind of just build your cloud engine and you can pretty much upload terabytes of data a day until you max out your credits. Uh, if you choose to stick with it, it can be a little expensive, but their servers are pretty reliable. Uh, Google does offer um, free use of their servers in a very limited way, so you can probably do some limited transfers. But that's pretty much it. So if you have any ideas, questions, suggestions, you know, please feel free to uh, you know comment on our uh, YouTube page. And you know, if you see the little globe, uh, you see the like button, please uh, hit those. Those again really do help us out. Uh, I didn't understand the importance of it. So other than that, I appreciate your time. And, uh, you know, I just hope it insulted your intelligence. <laughs> if you're brand new to all this, I hope it inspired you a little bit. Have a good one.